look out. 40's back. G'day, I'm Dustin Martin, and this week is my three... Wait, I'm not Dustin Martin. That's weird. He doesn't speak to the media. I'm James Clements, and this is the media, I guess. Media Today Show. No, the AFL Today Show. We're here to make footy a little bit of fun. That's what we do here. Tell you what, it could use a bit more fun this week. It's like, oh, we all love Dusty Martin. He's like, I'm not talking to any of you. <laughs> yeah, I haven't heard from him all week. Yeah. It's weird. In a surprise twist. Uh, this is the AFL Today Show, of course. Joining me, as always, it's the Stats Boy, local weirdo, footy nuff, AFL expert, some would call him. What's going on, Liam McKellen? I'll take all those things. Uh, I'm just excited. North are going to win two in a row. Dusty's on the show. Uh, no, nah, that'd, be, that'd be cool if Dusty was on the show, but very excited. I. It is weird because, like, Dusty doesn't speak to the media. No. And I'm like, wait. I don't know what Dusty Martin's voice sounds like in my brain right off the top I, of the head. I do, it's I think. Weird. I think I do, but a few people would say the same thing because he bizarre. doesn't talk very much. Yeah, I'm just thinking about it. Anyway. <laughs> the silent assassin. Subscribe to the AFL Today Show's YouTube and all the social channels, of course. What is it? Sports Today Show on Facey? Yep. Checks out. All right. Hold on. But the cool thing is no footy tonight. And when I say cool, I mean the worst thing in the world. <laughs> the opposite of cool. This is what crap. are we doing? What am I meant to do on a Thursday night now, stats boy? I don't know. Talk to my wife? Yeah, what the hell is Come that on, about? man. <laughs> <laughs> old mate's like, what are you doing? I'm like, talking to you? And she's like, nah. nah. Not on Put my Put on an old Carlton game, Jim, and just, just get excited from, yeah, the just, 90s, from the 90s, I reckon. I'll just rewatch Essen and Carlton last week. <laughs> anyway, let's do some news before we get into... The round 14 preview, preview, preview. Uh, we do only have the six games this week because we have... Good for a podcast. A huge array of teams on buys. Now, can I do this off the top of my head again? <laughs> uh, I don't it? know. Carlton are on the buy. This is awesome. You win a game of footy on a Sunday night where everybody's watching. You beat an old-timey rival. There is nothing better than then having the buy after that because you're just like, yeah. this is two weeks of radicalness. Just chill, yeah. This is great. Yeah. Essendon have the buy next week. They are playing this week, aren't they? No. Oh, no, they're no, on they, the buy this week. I've got them here if you want me to just read them out or do you okay. want to try and guess them. Carlton, <laughs> Essendon, Gold Coast, Melbourne. Yeah. I want to say... <laughs> I can do it. There's I believe in me. The, the uh, There's one that's a bit higher up. No, I'm going to no. Gold Coast, West Coast, both the coasters. Yep. Is that who you missed? I think that's all you missed. I think Carl- all I missed. So it's Gold Coast, Carlton, Geelong, Essendon, Melbourne, West Geelong. Coast. I didn't say Geelong. Oh, there you go. Weird. What anyway. did I get right? <laughs> anyway, let's do some news before that. So those teams are on the bye, but yes. Chef Truck is cooked for the season stats, boy. I see what you did there. Ah, uh, I know. No what good. Did I do? Oh, <laughs> nothing, nothing. Yeah, I saw he posted on Instagram. He said he's out till yep, 2025. No good. I think Melbourne season was cooked anyway, but he- without him, it's even more cooked. Double cooked. Double cooked. Double fried. <laughs> Double fried Over, overcooked? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, more cooked than one of my old man's snags. That's a good one. Yeah. The Anytime you have the phrase, looks like he could have been in a car crash. I know. Car crash victim, usually associated with car crash. Well, that's not great. You're playing footy. You're not Still in the hospital car. at this point as well. Posted from the hospital bed. Uh, so the lacerated spleen, Ugh. four broken ribs. Yeah, yeah just... Just chill, just chill bro. Mate. Just go back some pasta um, and you'll be fine. Collingwood players were telling him to go off. They're like, mate, you look cooked. None of the Melbourne players were because they're like, oh, we're hitting to play. <laughs> the Collingwood players on the other team are like, just go off. We are looking after you. Or they're saying that because he's good. Of course they want to say that to go, but all still, right, we're, I don't want to play against it's, I've never seen that before where the other team's like, just go off. <laughs> mate, you're rooted. What yeah. are you doing? <laughs> that kind of vibe. Yes. So that's Melbourne season sort of like in a nutshell, right? Like mm-hmm. they've sort of had all the potential in the world. Petrarca's now done. This is a huge impact because you look at their midfield depth, it's not that great. Clary's out of form. Clary has not been good all year. Unfit. Jack Viney sort of dropped off a cliff as mm. well. I expect a big Viney resurgence in this sort of yeah. like without Petrarca there. Yeah, could be a super look, Viney, actually. Just saying. Yeah. Big POD, bit of a pod Yeah. So, yeah, it's a tough, tough one from the Ds here. From here on out, just for the simple fact, like, yeah, to make finals is going to be a hard ask, let mm-hmm. alone actually challenge. So without Petrarca, it gets a lot harder. Yep. Hawker, Blake Hardwick. Yeah, the Five-year year deal. Five-year deal, which I thought he was a little bit older, but he's only 27, so that, that's about right. Yeah, five-year deal, why not? That's pretty good. Yeah, he, he's, he's been there sort of swing man. He's, he went forward a couple of times, and then when he was playing forward, they're like, oh, we're going we're gonna to win this game. So you're going back. And then that cooked him, obviously, that uh, was a bit controversial. But he's been a pretty solid performer for the Hawks. Ne- never gets those... Massive stats, but he's a yeah, pretty consistent performer. Nearly won that game single-handedly against Port. I know. Uh, the Rue Union. No, oh, I'm excited for this. No one's rocking up, Stats Boy. Oh. The 1999 Premiership Ruse yeah. 
there's going to be like four dudes sitting there. It's going to be like Mick Martin and Corey Kernan. <laughs> Mick Martin, legend. Corey yeah. McKernan just hanging out yeah. together, just yeah. going. A lot of big voices. <laughs> just, <laughs> just having a giggle. Uh, no Wayne Carey. No Glenn Archer. Oh. No Anthony Stevens. Oh. Honestly, I don't care if Wayne Carey's there or not, but Can we get Kelly definitely Stevens Arch, in? the shimboner of the century has to be there. Kelly Stevens. Oh, yeah. Send Kelly Stevens along? No Stevens. What's she think. doing now? Just asking. I'm just I curious. Adam Simpson is still rolling I, in. Yeah, he's a skipper for a long time, Adam Simpson. I like, I like Adam fun. Simpson. Uh, the 1999 Kangaroo Stats Boys. Mm-hmm. So before your time, basically. I was, I was alive. Yeah. I was there. Not, <laughs> no, I wasn't there. You weren't exactly alive. to the guy. Kangaroo <laughs> Boys. Yeah. They, my, my whole family was there. I hated that in that grand final. Why is that, Jim? Because Carlton, Carlton got lost. absolutely yeah. smoked. Well, they shouldn't have been in it. It was uh, nah. was it Essendon that year. Did they beat Essendon or not? Yeah, they did. I believe they did. Yeah, then yeah. they should have been in the grand final, Fair stats enough. boy. Well, I'm not complaining because apparently that's how it works. You understand, right? If you <laughs> beat it? teams, ah. you make the grand final. I'm not complaining. So they deserve <laughs> to be there. Essendon didn't because they didn't win the that's game. That's true. That's true. I just thought your love of Essendon might shine through, but no, the nah, 1999. My love of Essendon really just grew with 2000 when they were just the greatest team. When they were the greatest team and they won. But yeah, everyone was saying, oh, North wouldn't meet Essendon because North lost not that long ago. But we won the grand final, it doesn't matter. So up, uh, take that, Carlton. The 99 <laughs> reunion, it's just funny that Wayne Carey, Glenn Archer, Anthony Stephen, basically that's like sad, yeah. the engine room, yeah. the sort of be all and end all, 25th anniversary, and they're just like, nah, I'm good. Yeah. Half of them don't like Wayne Carey, so that. That's fair He's enough. not going to be but, there, though. Yeah. That's the best part. It's like, yeah. oh, is Wayne going to be there? Archer's no, it's like, all right, sick, I'll go. Especially that he's, Archer's son will be playing. So that's a bit sad that he, yeah, if he's not it's there. bizarre. Yeah. It's also a big milestone week just in general, isn't it? Why is that? There's a big milestone this weekend. Is it? CJ's 50th. Let's go. <laughs> Let's rank all 50 of his games. Now, just, go it. One. Just not 50. last week. No, not last week. He's had a, he's had a good career oh, already. I like. He's a very fun player. But, uh, yeah, don't think he's anywhere near some other guys playing. Hayward's 50th. Will Hayward's 150th. Sorry, 150th, yeah. Uh, Dusty's 300th, some other bloke, yeah. Yeah, some guy. Yeah, yeah some dude. <laughs> You'll hear a little bit about it over the weekend. Yes. Uh, but in terms of other folks out there, you've got a – you got Marcus Windhager's playing his 50th as well. Is he played 50? There you go. The tag. Riley West has apparently played his 50th game. Okay. This is his 50th this week. Mm-hmm. Uh I do like that CJ is playing his 50th while Dusty is playing his 300th. That's yeah, awesome. yeah. There'll uh, be a banner. <laughs> Surely the banner is 10 times bigger for Dusty because they're playing uh, against each other. War criminal Braden Maynard <laughs> playing his 200th game. So 200th, really? Yeah. Wow. Pretty good. To- good. Toby Bedford, 50th game. There's See, so many milestones this week. Lots of really big milestones. Man, everyone just started at around the same time, all these 50th, ga- 50th they games. Just, they just really wanted to match up with Dusty. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, Tom Lynch was all like, I want to come back, and he has been named. Has he been so named? This is pretty cool. Tom oh. Lynch back for the... For the Tigers, it's pretty him fun. in the goal square. He might only have one leg. As I've said, it's like, what are you, like, you going to do if you play him and he gets hurt again? Lose more? Exactly. Like, just go. Doesn't matter. Have a crack. Come on. Uh, and the other sort of big news popping off is that Jack Buckley and Josh Kelly are back for the GWS Giants. So Ooh. we'll get to all of that in the teams as we go through all of the game previews. Yes. Previews, previews, previews. Uh, with Isaac Rankine named as well, uh, which would be pretty fun, mm-hmm. pretty interesting. Uh, right. We can get into that with the uh, yeah with the teams. We'll do the teams. Yep. As we do these game previews. Perfect. Here's that. Let's do it. <laughs> Round 14. Game previews. <laughs> <laughs> Friday night footy. Friday night footy. Oh, no Thursday. Straight to oh, Friday. Oh, God. Seriously. <laughs> We're going to have another 10-minute t- segment here. Thursdays. <laughs> It makes the weekend feel like Thursdays are for the boys. Yeah, yeah. Thursdays are for the boys. You hang out with your boys. You smash a few tins. Yeah. You watch the footy. Go to the pub or you just hang out. It's just it's still a midweek game basically. It's a midweek outing. Get you through you, the week, but it's close enough to the weekend that you feel okay. Give us back our Thursday night football, you fascists. Anyway, <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say something else. <laughs> Friday night footy, however. Just seems so boring compared to it. It does, it? So it does. especially Friday. this game as well. well we start off the round fourteen with the Brisbane Lions hosting the St Kilda Saints. Are they twenty eight and a half point favourite stats man? Wow! Up at the Gabba, that, that right. checks out. Yeah, the Gabbatoir. The over under is one sixty point five, which is mostly just to do with St Kilda. Because if it was usually just Brisbane playing anybody, you go one eighty. It'd be one sixty eight yeah. and a half. Usually is that over under yeah. line. Yeah. Uh, you can bump that down a bunch because they're playing the Saints. So give us some stats, stats, man. All right. Uh, Brisbane have won six of the last seven against the Saints. The last three have been decided, though, by less than three goals. Ooh. I think that also comes down to the Ross Lyon clamps, which I'll get into. 17 of the uh, last 19 Saints interstate games have gone under the total points. 
I am a bit worried. I don't think it's going to go under this one. 160 still seems pr like pretty good if because Lions can kick a kick a decent score. But yeah, Saints just like to bring the clamp. So maybe lean towards the under in terms of the stats, but I think at home you'd take the over. The other one is the underdog uh, has covered the line in 11 of the last 14 Lions games. So they've been favourites almost every week still. Even when the Lions have been losing, they've been favourites and the underdog still covers that line. So I don't mind Saints to cover the line of this one. Interesting, because mm. it is... When you do think, literally when you just look at it, you're like, this is 13th versus 14th. Which is crazy that both these teams were in the finals last year. <laughs> what the hell? One was in the grand final. Yeah. Uh, the big question here is loser goes home, right? Pretty much. I think uh, well, Saints are already should be going home. But Saints are basically cooked. They're five and eight, and it feels like it's a very, very big ask for them to win enough games on the trot mm -hmm. to give the finals a shake. Because yep. with eight losses sort of already tagged on your name, you literally can't probably lose again to get... <laughs> literally probably can't. You can't. Literally yeah. probably can't. Uh, I'm trying to think. Can you make the finals? Yeah, pretty much. Because you're basically going to be sitting there 16 and sixteen and eight, right, essentially, or the 24 rounds, so 16, 15 and eight. To make finals? Like, yeah. Oh, no, it's like 13. 13, 13 so it's going to get very, very hard. <laughs> It'll though. get hard. It gets very hard from here. Brisbane Lions can still... Five, six, and one. The draw gives them like a weird little uh, kick, but yeah. with the teams ahead of them, you think about Melbourne being seven and six, you can probably see them dropping off a little bit. Mm -hmm. Who knows what's going to happen to GWS this week? We'll talk about that in a second. The fact that Hawks are above both of these teams and the Hawks can probably actually give the finals a bit of a shake if they keep on winning. It's crazy. It's pretty yeah. funny. So loser goes home. Loser is goes essentially home. Yeah. Is this a loser goes home match? Definitely. Pretty much. Definitely. Should we look at some ins and outs as well? I just Let's thought of that, actually. Do it. We've got, uh, who have we got? Zane Cordy back in. Definitely not a big in. Ari Scholl, maker, making his debut. He Love got that. famous in the longest kick, I think, last year. He can kick like 70 meters from the fence. So hopefully we see a few tops. That would be pretty cool. Zach Jones and Cooper Sharma back in. Oh, they've managed my man. Wanganee Miller, that's cost me in Supercoach as well. Naziah Wanganee oh, Miller up no. has been managed. Why? The Supercoach is just it's... everywhere thrown into absolute oh, shambles. Oh. So Zach Jones, Cooper, <laughs> Zach Jones, that's going to be fun. Oh, I forgot about Cooper, I didn't say, yeah. I said Cooper Sharman as well, yep. right? So mm -hmm. no changes to the Lions. I think they'll be fine. So the tip for this one for me is very easily Brisbane by about four goals. I'm going to say 23 points. Yep. Uh, I think I'd actually bump that up in my tips.com.au. Uh, it's a little bit higher, it's but bit I think higher. I'll go Brisbane 23. What do you reckon, Stats, man? Yeah, I reckon just because of the clamps by Ross, they'll keep it pretty low scoring, so I'm going to go Lions by 19. Because if you think about that back line of St Kilda, right? So with, what, Cal Wilkie, Cal Wilkie and co. But Brisbane at home, when you've got Joey Duckett, Eric Joey Danaher, come you've off got his best ever game, playing yeah. his best game of his career last week, yep. basically. Yep. And Charlie Cameron, it feels like they should feast. Yeah. And... You look at the Brisbane back line as well. Um, we'll talk about Zorko later, but when you've got Dunkley, Neil, uh, Jared Berry might be Jared using great form. Berry, Jared Berry. <laughs> and Zorko and Co. <laughs> like, there should be enough power to get by this and kill the yeah, team. That I think so. We're very good last week, don't get me wrong, but also still, ew. They're still 5 and 8. <laughs> still, <yeah>. ew. <laughs> I want no part of them. So, Brisbane, Friday night. This will look great because Gabba at the night, those always nighttime games again always looks great. So but the Saints always make a game, uh, ruin it. it Ross mine specifically. It might just stick. He actually has already tossed up the idea of like, who do I tag? Do I tag Lockie Neal? And you're like, Ooh, oh, could it be a tag on, tag on tagger? Jared Berry and, and uh, Windhager just tag each other. Tag him out of the game. <laughs> tag him each, tag each that. tagger out of the game. It's like just both of you go sit down. <laughs> I knew you would like that. Both of you just <laughs> go. Just sit on the bench and just, just annoy each other. Send a tag at it. How do you beat a tagger? Send you put a, tagger a tagger to beat a tagger. <laughs> they might explode. I don't know if that will work. Send a tagger to catch a tagger. I like that. <laughs> All right. Saturday afternoon, we have the Western Bulldogs versus Fremantle. Minus five and a half favorites are Ooh, the Western really? Bulldogs, question mark. At Marvel, 145. Fascinating setup. The over-under, 167.5. This is, of course, the line of demarcation Western <laughs> Bulldogs at 11th at mm -hmm. six and seven. And Freo at seven, four and one. Who travel pretty okay, Stats Boy. Get us some stats. Yeah, they travel really well. Freo have won their last five matches in Victoria. So any Freo fan thinking, oh, should I go to the game? Go, because you play really well in Victoria. And they've covered the uh, line in eight of the last nine away matches. So Ooh. they always keep it close. Uh, even if they even if they lose in uh, Victoria or interstate, they go really well away, which is really awesome by Freo. Because I think in the past, you'd say, oh, they're good at Optus and they're not good anywhere else. But they've been better away this, this last couple of years. That yeah. is weird. Mm. 
Uh, the dogs can kick a score at Marvel as well. Yeah, dogs last five matches at Marvel have gone over the total points. I don't know if Frio have the firepower, but they've been kicking decent scores with uh, even without the big names in their fold. Like Bailey Banfield's been going all right. Yeah. So we talked about this on yesterday's show, the Midweek Madness show. Cody Waitman is back. Oh, he's back. I just saw that. Yeah. Alongside yeah. Ed Richards and Anthony Scott. Out, out go Alex Keith, uh, Lockie. McNeil and Riley Garcia. That's a tough super coach out if you've still got him. Yeah. Uh, in for Freo, Matthew Johnson, Corey Wagner. Hello. <laughs> Wagner. Out he goes. So, bit of a tricky setup. I like this game a lot because it'll be it'd be like weird, like one of those weird, strange games. Like, why isn't this in Ballarat kind of vibe? Well, I, yeah, I think they have played in Ballarat before. I think Keith's a big injury because you got Keith going out who's pretty much their full back or half back. Yep. And then none of the guys, all the guys coming in are at my height. So I, I don't know about that. Uh, I think you're that giving decision, yourself then. a couple of extra centimeters. No, I, stuff, I think man. I'm taller than Cody Wayman. I'll have to double check that one. <laughs> Maybe we can get you guys in a fight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Caleb Sarong, Sarong, yeah. loves a game against the Dogs as well. Averages what, Stats Boy? Uh, 30 disposals, five clearances, six tackles. So super coach vibes, maybe a bit of a captain or vice captain. I'm, I'm actually tempted now that I say that out loud. Uh, yeah, he loves playing against the Dogs. The most disposals against any team that he's ever played is nice against one. the Dogs. Uh, the big question, big question. <laughs> Here we go. Will the lob spud lob up in the lob bowl? The Rory Lob Bolt. Ooh, I'm going to say... he was under an injury cloud after last week, right? Yeah. He's been named, so that's cool. They mm-hmm. need him to fire as well because it's basically Jamari Ugalhagen. Now they've actually got Cody Waitman back. That's handy. He kicks like, a few goals, yeah. Especially at Marvel, you can see Cody Waitman just come from nowhere and just go, hey, just kick four. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> yeah. like, all right, sure. Uh, but will Lob actually do anything? They kind of need him to because um, he gives that forward line a bit of a different f- sort of feel, yep. I guess. But at the same time... I mean, Frio are the better team, aren't they? I think, well, in terms of ladder, in terms of at their best, the dogs might be. But in terms of who who would you rather rely on, uh, life or death, or if you go on your tip, life or death, surely you can't tip the dogs. They're just so frustrating, especially a Rory Lob team. Uh, sorry, a team that has Rory Lob. You just you can't trust them. I don't like them at all. So Frio's games this year, <laughs> cast your mind back. All right. What are the games that they've lost? They lost an extremely close game to my beloved Blues. Yeah, they played really well, yeah. They lost an extremely close game to Port the following week Mm -hmm. at Adelaide Oval again by three points. I like that. They lost a derby against the Eagles, and they got smashed by Sydney because Sydney are the greatest team we've ever seen. So (laughs) There's uh, a lot of greatest teams you've ever seen. There's the tie against Collingwood that deleted Melbourne. Basically... You look at those things, you're like, they've been killed by Sydney and that's about it. Yeah, the, the like, outlier like is that West Coast like, game. It's just because it's like weird things happen in the derby, like that's weird it. things happen in Tassie, as you would say. But then the other ones, you're like, all right, they lost to good teams on their day. Yeah. They're still going really well. Yeah. So I'm tipping Freo. Yeah. I know they're not the favourites. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tip them by, like you said that they've covered, what is it, eight of the last nine. I'm going to tip them by eight. So okay. I think it's a close one Saturday yep. afternoon. Yeah. I'm going Freo by 15, just the dogs. I know that they go win, loss, win, loss, or lose a couple, win a couple. But, yeah, I think Freo just being a better team and Sarong's going to have an absolute field day. So the win, loss, win, loss, win, loss of the dogs. Let's have to a go look back actually, to the flip yeah. side. So yeah. they have – they got smashed last week by Brisbane. They like were 14 yeah. 70. It was gross. Yeah. The fact that it came after they'd beaten the Magpies, you're like – Come on. I hate this team. <laughs> I know. What are you doing to us? And Brisbane have been horrible. What are we meant to do with this? So I'm just going, I don't want any bar of it. We're going for you. Yeah, what have they got? Win – yeah, loss, win, loss, win, win, loss, loss. Yeah, it's like the worst yeah. Fibonacci sequence you've ever come <laughs> They're across. They're 50% in the last six weeks. Then the big one at the MCG. That's right. Richmond Hawthorne, yes. Dusty's 300th game. Here we go. This will be a banner day. The Hawks are 12 and a half point favorites in this one at the moment, stats, man. 4.30, the MCG, Saturday afternoon, 168 and a half points is the over-under. The Tigers, will they step up for Dusty's 300th? That's obviously one of the big questions. The other big question is, how many goals will Dusty kick? I'm going to say four. I reckon if someone's standing in the goal square, you know, Dusty, just come past and they'll just handball it to him. He'll kick a few goals. He'll kick a few early because he, he sank might run out towards the end, but he'll kick a few early from the boundary, in front of the uh, the big crowd. I think he's going to fire up Dusty, so four plus on goal. Do you think the secret maybe to getting Dusty to fire up is just <laughs> the Tigers have maybe missed a trick for 300 games when they've not been in actually a big game and just gone, hey, Dusty, Pretend it's a grand final. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, ah! 
<laughs> yeah. Like loses it, runs out, gets 25 yeah. kicks, two snags, like eight clearances. If it was a grand goes. final, it'd be getting best on. So. This is my question. <laughs> Does he fire up and go massive because he's, th- he's 300th? Maybe. Let's see. I yeah. can't wait. This Do they hypnotise be... him to pretend that it's a grand final? It's probably not a bad <laughs> idea. Uh, in terms of the ins and outs, as we already mentioned, right, we've already got Tom Lynch coming back as well as that's, Dusty. That's he was managed last two week. Two big ins, yeah. Uh, out goes Samson Ryan and Dion Presti, the meatball. Uh, for the Hawks, Ned Reeves goes out, replaced by Lloyd Meek, Nick Watson, the wizard. The wiz. In for Seamus Mitchell. Uh, as I mentioned, big milestone game, CJ playing his 50th. Yes. Um, but outside of this, the Tigers. Don't mind beating the Hawks, hey, stats guy? Yeah, Richmond have only lost one of the last 10 against the Hawks. That was when the Hawks, sorry, have had a bad period where, yeah, the Richmond have actually been pretty good, but they've lost six of their last eight matches, uh, Tigers, by over 25 points. So Ooh. I don't understand why the line is that small, minus 12 and a half. I know you might be uh, thinking differently to me, but Hawks have won five of the last six, and they're just a much, much better side than Richmond. Hawks are pushing for finals. Richmond are second last. I think the line should, I think the line just people are betting on Richmond going, it's for Dusty, and then everyone's going to go, oh, Hawks have won by 20 or 30 points, and... I forgot that Dusty doesn't run the whole Richmond team. And Lynch. Lynch is the big question as well. I, actually, we've got – if there's another big question, if you don't mind, if he's going to be fit enough to kick a few goals, I think that'll decide if the match is close. If he's come out just because he's got a sore hammy and I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. It's going to be interesting no matter what, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, the fun. Hawks coming off a – like both teams coming off like really good wins last week, yeah. right? Like. The Tigers beat the Crows. They get the 10-day rest having played on the Thursday night. Very um, handy, yeah. Hawks played the Giants down in Tassie last week, got that win as well, just so at the end of the game, of course. Yep. And now they play against each other, 17th versus 12th. Fun matchup. Mm-hmm. But the Hawks have beaten the Crows and the Lions before that and should have beaten the Power. <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> and they, like, should have be, should, they should be six in a row. They should be rolling. They yeah. beat the Saints prior to that too. The Hawks are a good-ish sort of team. Mm -hmm. Literally, you wipe away the first five weeks, and you're like, they're good. Mm. Unfortunately, those five weeks still exist. They do, unfortunately. They would be in the finals if they didn't. (laughs) So it sort of comes down to the simple idea of, do this? does this Tigers team, like, actually lift properly? There was, like, the idea of, like, they might get Hopper, Taranto, they're still back in, like, the mix. They don't get them back. Well, Taranto's already back, Taranto's in, not Hopper, though. Not Hopper yet, right? So you have this moment of, like, do they have enough? Is there enough class across this Richmond team? I say yes. Oh, okay. Go on the Tykes. Tykes. Just want to see it happen. Richmond by 16. I actually might drop that down to about eight. I think it'll be a close, close tight point. arm wrestle. Dusty goes for 23 plus touches, a couple of goals, and away we that go. Was very specific. Yeah, why not? Well, we, if you listen to yesterday's show that you were on, I forgot. We yeah. named exactly his stat. We line, do a so lot of shows. Way I to just, keep up. Stats <laughs> I just can't keep up with all of What's it. your tip there, Stats Man? Uh, I'm going to go Hawks, but I'm going to go by 20. I think it'll be close, similar to uh, Richmond versus Geelong. They did really well in the first half. Then Hawks just steam away in the last quarter, I reckon. Crowd number. Crowd number. Ooh. I know it's sold out in MCC because I'm trying to get, line up for a ticket there on Saturday. So, uh, yeah, uh, you, what have you got? 78? 78. Ooh, I'm gonna, yeah, I reckon eight. I'm going to go 80, 81, just All to right, go just above the pin it. like this. <laughs> the pin. We've got a barn me riding on this oh, now. Oh, okay. <laughs> I might change. Can I just go 79? <laughs> no, I'll go 81, 81. <laughs> Closest to the pin. 78, that, look, it could easily get 80, I reckon, in a pinch. I think yeah. the crowd numbers we've seen this year have been crazy, especially those uh, Saturday afternoon games at the G. Massive vibes. Yeah. Richmond fans haven't been turning up. This They'll the finally problem. turn up. They'll surely. turn up for Dusty 300. Yeah. Because they fans, how much do they want to pound into this as well, considering how well they're going? Mm-hmm. I think it'll be a big crowd. Interesting to see how big it does get. Yep. Saturday night, Saturday night footy. <laughs> Adelaide, Sydney. 19 and a half point favorites are the best team we've ever seen, the Sydney Swans. Ever. The Sydney Swans, <laughs> the best team we've seen this century. 19 and a half point favorites in Adelaide against the Adelaide Crom. 7.30 p.m. at the Adelaide Oval. How does this feel to you, Stats Boy? Over-under is 165 and a half, and you yep. feel like that should fly over considering how good Sydney are in as well. The big question here is very clearly, do Adelaide stink? Oh. Like, that's basically the yeah. big question. Yeah. Can Adelaide give their season a, like just the old, uh, you know, the boom, yeah. the, <laughs> the heart jumper? Called? Yeah, I forgot what there they're called. Go. I forgot what they're called as well. Paddles of life. Yeah. <laughs> just say words. It'll be fine. <laughs> Um, I think not. It, their, their season's done anyway. They, even if they win somehow win this or they get close to Sydney and everyone goes, oh, they put up a decent fight. They are cooked. They have been so disappointing. I'd say probably other than Brisbane, the most disappointing team this year. I had them right, right up there, which I still can't believe I said that. But 
their team is decent on paper. They just should be playing a lot better. Their season's cooked, so yeah. So they get Isaac Rankine, Nick Murray, Braden Cook in for Brody Smith, Chris okay, Burgess, some and Ned McHenry. Good uh, no changes for the Swans. Yep. Which is terrifying because they are the best team we've ever seen. <laughs> better than the uh, the Swans from, what is it, 10 years ago? Or 2016. 20 years ago, yeah. 20, Sorry, 20 2006. Years ago. Yeah. Where we go. Better well, Adam Goods. <laughs> better than the 3 P Lions. Drew Bolton. No one's going to be able to stop this Swans team at all, all season. Okay. They're winning the flag. It's simple as that. I, I think so as well. Listen to me now. Hear me later. <laughs> simple as you like. <laughs> Too much Swans. Sydney talk and Alex is Swans are winning the flag because <laughs> they are the best team we've ever seen. They'll probably win five in a row. They're that good. Five in a row? Maybe eight. Ooh. Not one, not two. I'm going LeBron. Not three, <laughs> not, not four, LeBron. not five, not six. Yeah, LeBron Chad Warren is never going to leave. That didn't like, work out for LeBron. That's this not one's work so out good. <laughs> anyway, I'm taking Adelaide. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. yeah. No, I'm that would have been funny if you went all in on City and said. Swans are uh, the top ranked offense. Yeah, one and two offense defense. Second ranked defense. And then you've got uh, Adelaide surprisingly are the fifth best defense. So I'd be leaning towards the under. you got yep. two really good defenses going head to head. You had a stat there actually about Adelaide have lost the last three versus Sydney at Adelaide over by a combined of, uh, margin of seven points. That really surprised me. Seven points in three games. I don't think Adelaide are going to get close to Sydney in this one. Why don't you think that? Just uh, because Sydney are one and two in offensive defense, as I just said, and Adelaide have stunk it up. They've got Rankin back, so all the Adelaide fans are like, oh, they're going to win. They've got Nick Murray, he's a good defender, but they don't have enough uh, firepower to kick over 100 points. Because there were whispers that Tex might come back as well, but he hasn't, obviously. No. Even Uh, if he was in, though, he's been horrible this year. So This is a very good point. So Adelaide-Sydney, the last couple of matches that have been that close, 74-73. Uh, 74-71. Actually, that was the controversial one last year that Adelaide should have won. Uh, but anyway, it's <laughs> yeah. pretty close ones. It's pretty fun. Yeah, okay. Uh, I don't think it's going to be that close. Though. I don't think it'll be that close either. Sydney by 22. I think it's a little bit of a slog. I think Sydney still cover. Yep. Uh, I think Adelaide are uh, a bit of a rabble. Basically, as soon as they drop the fan favorite, Lukey Pedler. Lukey Pedler, bring him back, my man. They're falling off a pedestal bring because they put away the Pedler. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> You're killing me, Adelaide. Oh, good. I don't ask for much. Just play the fan favorite. Simple as that. Yeah. Rory Laird, cooked. Jordan Dawson, Dawson's he's cooked. looked cooked this year. Yeah. Isaac Rankine, he's been out for the last few weeks. Saligo's a weapon. I love Saligo. Lockie Scholl, got a lot of time for him. Yeah. Mark Hamilson, Luke Skywalker himself, Will <laughs> Hamill. He's all right. He's all right. <laughs> like, but Sydney are loaded on every single line. They've oh, got yeah. superstars in basically every single position. They are the best team we've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm going Sydney by 43. This is because I don't think Adelaide are going to get anywhere near him. That line is way too small. Adelaide, are, Adelaide are cooked. Sydney have been smashing teams. Like, I think their average winning margin is like 40 or 50 this year. So Sydney by 43. Nice one. Sydney by, what did I say? 22. 22. Yep. yep. Sunday. <laughs> oh. The up and about Clucko Roos. Let's go. We're going to make finals. <laughs> going back to back. The Roos versus the Pies. The Pies are 41 and a half point favorites. Oh, wow. Are they also going to have a sook that they have to play at Marvel? Probably, oh, what yeah. do you mean we have to play Marvel? Because it's North it's our Melbourne's home. Game, home. It's, yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah, it's actually a sellout, which is our first sellout in a while. Very nice. Yeah. Well, it's uh, close to a sellout. Plenty of Roos fans there, no doubt. Uh, 1 p.m. Yeah. on Sunday. Over under is 174.5 because <clears throat> Collingwood might be able to do that even without a forward line. Hey, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, the Pies have not covered in seven of the last nine as favourites. Yes, That's man. yeah, and they've uh, but they have won their last seven against the Roos. I don't like reading stats about uh, my team, but North have at a- the same time. You could almost <laughs> say that about every. Yeah, team. so I had a look. Most teams we play when we were good when I was in school, 2016. Last year I was in school. I remember going, "We're good," and I was getting into all the Carlton fans' face, all the Essendon fans, and I can't do that anymore. Collingwood have won the last seven. North haven't won this matchup since 2016, as I just mentioned. So that is, I am a little bit worried. That is brutal. Yeah, you probably should be. Yeah, uh, you don't like the. <laughs> idea of a high scoring game though no look other than Larky obviously kicking 5-0 last week we still North couldn't kick a score then you got Collingwood so many forward outs uh, obviously who was who was the man in the uh, live stream that kicked a few goals last night Krugs I almost forgot his name Nathan Kruger he'll fire up but uh, North I think Aiden Cork can play alright on him Five of the last six Pies games have also gone under the total points just because they don't have that offense at the moment. So right. gone under. Nice one. Uh, the ins for Collingwood, Edward Allen, Tuji Ath, and uh, Reef McInnes back in. Oh, that's uh, uh, Jas' brother. Is that's that his it. first Tuji Ath that making his debut. Oh, cool. As mentioned, the war He's... criminal Braden Maynard <laughs> playing his 200th. Uh, for the Ruse, Riley Hardiman. 
Will Phillips, yep. Lazaro's dog. Oh, hang on. Bryn Teekle. Bryn Teekle from Port. He, we got him in the mid-season draft. I'm actually very excited to watch how he plays. It gives, uh, we'll give, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jerry, a bit of a chop in the ruck. Good I, words. I couldn't get it, get it out there. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. The big question here is, are the Roos going back to back, baby? Oh, I wish, Jim. I wish. Again, oh, you won't hear from me for a few days like last week if we won, but not happening. If it was anyone else but the pies, oh, you you changed your tip from yeah, north. I, I had to you up and about. I was basically going, I'm going to fake him out. Have a <laughs> well, north, what are you tipping? North by two, pies by sixty two. Sixty two. It's a ten goal swing. It's actually pretty funny. How does a team go from winning to uh, the margin being minus forty one and a half? Like, ugh. I don't, I don't get it. So the Ruse <laughs> winning last week, and they're suddenly forty two point underdogs. Forty two point underdogs, which is just funny. Not many teams would win and then have B forty two. No, I don't. Underdogs. I don't trust the Pies uh, forward line. I think your Ruse will give them a little bit of a shake here. Yeah. I think the speed and everything that you have in the forward line and the midfield should at least sort of give you a bit of a chance. I think the Pies by thirty two as they slowly sort of assert themselves in the second half. Yeah. Uh, as we've sort of seen so many times with the Ruse, where it just sort of gets a little bit, half a little bit out of hand. It does. It all just gets a bit wonky on us. <laughs> and we're all going to the pub. Like, that's how they roll. It's like, oh, that went that's sideways. Does, yeah, yeah. Went sideways quick. We go to the pub. It's yeah. like, it's halfway through the third quarter, it's like, it's not going to get I think better. a few of our players go to the pub before the game because I don't see them sometimes. But coming off a win, I'm very excited, but I'm going to have to tip Collingwood by 30 points. Nice one. Uh, I think we can cover the line, but... Well, positive. if you just think about that Collingwood forward line, you've got... Still got Schultz. Mm-hmm. You've got Lipinski up there. They're Jeremy good. Howe. Like, yeah, still good. Kruger's fantastic. He was awesome he last was great. week. Yeah. Just another big target. Uh, Darcy Cameron in the ruck. You've got... A, like, Dacos has obviously still been named. He's still a fitness test, as we sort of talked about yep. yesterday. Uh, but he has been named, so we'll see what happens. I think they're still just too good. Yeah. For your beloved Roos. Unfortunately, you are correct. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> GWS take on Port Adelaide at NG. They're finally back there. It's been a while, I'm pretty sure. Never it? played NG, apparently. Uh, oh. Seven and a half point favorites are GWS. Actually, break down their schedule stats, boy, and see where they've played. Because well, NG's just there, the showgrounds one. That is it was getting yes. uh, redone, and then there was a few other events there. The showgrounds? I think they've... Where, have, where else have they played that? They surely have played there. It's a really good question. I'm getting. They've been playing now. around a few players. I've got to make they sure they played a actually... lot at Canberra. So actually, they might have played a lot less home games because of that. That that I'm pretty sure from memory we talked about that at the start of the season, from uh, yeah one of our previous shows. Good chat. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What was their last? So their last home game was. Well, they played Sydney Showground. Yeah, surely that's the. Green they played up. there against the, uh, the dogs, dogs three weeks ago. Yeah, I so, saw the same thing. Maybe this is the first time it's been called NG Stadium. No, they've been it's been called NG oh. before that because well, they played the Roos there back in March. I don't know what March. that's about. I don't know what that, that, that's about. Uh, so it's been a while. So they played there March 16 and then didn't play there okay, again it's been about until month. they played the Dogs there at the end of May. So there was a break there for the show and okay. stuff like that. Yep. Um, but they're there now. They then play the Swans <laughs> there the week after. Yep. And it's like it's like, and the they bridge. play the Blues there oh, in July. they got enough home like, games. That's settle right. down, stats, man. <laughs> I just thought they didn't play that much. The big question here is, like, the over-under is 169.5, which feels wonky because you never know with... This is basically... Giants have been horrible on offense. This is it. Let's have a look at Giants. It's the battle of the frauds. It is. But Jim, Port Adelaide are, like, pretty good, aren't they? No. Not, not since the start of the season. They're fourth. They're eight and four. But what are they? What Slider. are they really? <laughs> no one really knows. Fraud Adelaide. So Fraud Adelaide, in terms of the ins and outs for this game, uh, Jack Buckley, Josh Kelly, and Max Grzyowski. That's a great name. Uh, making his debut. Very cool. But that's massive for Jack Buckley, Josh Kelly, for their structure. Yeah, they're, they're both really, really good for players. Port, C. Rosie comes back. Ollie Lord, Dylan Ooh. Williams, Will Lorenz, Don <laughs> Tevis, and Quinton and Quinton Na- Quinta Knuckle. That's uh, fucking knuckle. Charlie Dixon dropped... Jeremy oh, what the Finlayson hell? He actually was dropped. Dropped. Ryan Burton injured. Uh, so Lorenz make his de- makes Jeez. his debut. Ken Inkley's just uh, brought this thought out. It's so probably worth it because, I don't know, they were... They've both been horrible, but they would not have expected that. They're two big forwards they've relied on probably the last four years. But you've got to make the big calls if you've been really bad. So I don't mind that from Ken. If you've swinging, been really swing, bad. Swinging, swinging the axe. Why not? So Port got rolled by the Blues and then have had the... Week off, I want to say. Yes, yes correct. Because uh, they had the, it was they and Frio had the buy last week. So it's a really, it's a really strange setup, right? With Port, because you just don't know what to think of them after that mm. handling by Carlton. Uh, they beat the Ruse before yeah, that. Hawks. They snuck by the Hawks in that stupid game. They beat the Cats in GMHBA. Lost so, the showdown. They're so inconsistent. Are they yeah. good? We don't Who know. Knows? <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? All right. 
You get some stats for us, stats man. Uh, yeah, why not? Underdog has won last four GWS games. So if they if they are underdog, they can win. So but they're not. So I, <laughs> the, the, the other stats, Port are going to win this. Uh, but the Power have won four of the last five meetings. Uh, the other one is each of GWS's. Uh, I was going to say I think it's last four games have gone under the total points. They've, their offense has been horrible. They haven't kicked over eighty points. I think it's the last six games. Oof. They, whereas at the start you were banking them in for hundred plus for the first five games. So Easy. I don't know what's going on with them. Jesse Hogan's out of form. They need him to fire up to, for them to win this game. I think. So GWS won this last time they played last year, 93-70. Mm-hmm. That would have been a final. Yes, it was. It was. That was uh, a great, great game at Adelaide Oval. Yeah. That's right. And they smashed them, Port smashed them prior to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Port deleted them prior to that as well. Smoked them before that. <laughs> Beat the Sands out of them before that. Yeah, so yeah. they've actually won four of the last five. Yep. But this is a Port team. That goes back to 2020 now. Mm-hmm. So they're not they're playing a very that often, different team right? right so now. it's a very strange setup. I am tempted to go Port. Ooh. Even with the changes, but yeah, they got Rose E back. Because the big question is, are GWS's woes just injury related? No. Or is it something deeper? Is it something more structural? Because you look at yeah. the way that Hogan, yeah. Toby Green and stuff have like Riccardi. Callum Brown. We, Callum everyone Brown. was saying he's the best player in the comp at the start of the year. And you look at their midfield, right? As soon as Caniglio and Josh Kelly have sort of dis- disappeared to injuries and stuff, mm. Tom Green has fallen off a cliff. Yeah. Kelly comes back. Cool. Does that That's help? Handy. Yeah, it does. And so twice. Been a lot of these little bits and bobs. The question for me just remains, can they actually stand up? Sam Taylor's there. Whitfield. They should be too good. I'm still going to go with GWS. This might be the last time I trust them. Ooh. Right. Yeah. Like this is a big test. Yeah. I'll How are, are, are they, they in the now? It's the battle of the frauds. Whoever yeah. loses this game, you are tarred with fraud. like <laughs> absolute fraud. We're yeah. gonna like tar and feather you with fraud across your name. Simple yeah. as that. Seems fair. So I'm going GWS by 18. GWS by 18. I'm gonna go GWS by six. Like we said, they, we just don't know what we're gonna get from these two teams. I think Cali's a massive in. I think Buckley's a massive in. At home, they'll be fired up. The Orange Army. The Orange Tsunami will be back. I think they're going to win by six points. All right. Another game on Sunday, the Community Cup between the Megahertz and the Rock Dogs. Who do we like in this one, Stats Boy? Oh, oh definitely the Megahertz. I've been a Megahertz fan. Boom, if I knew what, Rock Dogs. If I knew what you were talking about. I know what you're talking about, actually. But, yeah. Jim, aren't you a part of the media? You were a part of the music media for so long. I was. Are you going I to never it? got asked. You always go with it. To oh, the, I always say the squids. Yeah. Have a great day. Yeah, as if you didn't, you didn't get to play in it. That's a bit stiff. No, I never asked. Oh, oh, you should have. You got your booming left boot. <laughs> booming left leg. Uh, no, I never played in the Community Cup. Is it at uh, Icon Park? This one is at Victoria Park. Vic Park. Oh, Vic Park. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So I'll be at this game on Sunday afternoon. I'm going to nice. go for the Rock Dogs because <laughs> the Rock Dogs, love the Rock Dogs. A, great scarf. B, okay. they gave the squid a free scarf. I'm so trying to remember. I knew some people that played for We're Rock Dogs for life. Rock Dogs for life. And also a mate of mine is the team manager. So. All right, I feel like Rock and Dogs. I actually know some of the dudes on the Rock Dogs and the ladies, obviously. Uh, one of them actually used to be one of my interns. She's a there weapon, so that's Pull awesome. forward. I'm going the uh, megahertz. Just rock dogs you're going by rock dogs. three. <laughs> three what? Because the points. <laughs> there's not many there's goals. There's not much scoring <laughs> involved. There's way more tins that I will delete yep. Sunday afternoon before coming in to do our Sunday night show than goals will be scored. Yeah. We'll be like, where's Jim? We'll have to drag you out from Victoria Park. So, let's go rock dogs. Hey! <laughs> it's going to be great. Nice. Go the rock dogs oh, Sunday. Like when you say the extra game, I'm like, is there another game? <laughs> yeah. All right, big call for the weekend. Ooh. Round 14, big calls. Jesse Hogan boots a bag against Port, and that's the thing that gets GWS over the line here, Stats, man. That was my thinking mm. for this. You keep looking at this GWS team. Mm. It infuriates me how inconsistent they their, are. Their team on paper is They're bloody loaded. awesome. Yeah, they yeah. look loaded. They do. It's either like it feels to me it's like either going to be Hogan or Riccardi. Mm-hmm. Just somebody's going to go Riccardi's absolutely ham on this weirdly just janky power <laughs> defense, right? Mm-hmm. Because Radigalia, Alia, Alia, Houston, like Carlton showed you how the like the basically the blueprint for beating Port. It's like just tag Dan Houston out of the game. It works. And they don't have any bounce. Yeah, back. yeah. So. I think one of the big forwards for GWS gets going. I think it'll be Hogan, five plus. Nice. You're a big call. Uh, I'll, get, I'll get two, both from the Richmond game. I said before, Dusty's going to kick four, four plus in his big game, maybe even five. I reckon he's just, they're just going to look for him every time they go forward. And I also think that Tom Lynch is going to get subbed out in the first quarter. So don't, don't put him in your multis. I think they're gonna. he's going to come back way too early. He's just like, oh, it's Dusty 300th. I don't have a hammy anymore. Ping he'll be, yeah, I reckon he'll get subbed out nice and early. That's Something my other big call. Shot. Yeah. So look out for that one. I like it. The... The big call as well on top of that, I think if GWS beat Port, mm-hmm. 
I think Port might be a sneaky chance to Drop slide out. and Ooh, slide out possibly. of the Possibly, yeah. Especially, it's funny that they're fourth and they're making these radical changes to their team. That shows how, how bad their last month has been. Because if you think about some of the teams behind, like, so if they drop this game, there are other teams all the way down to seven to yep. Frio. That's like teams that are on four losses. And there's just so many silly, you know, uh, draws and stuff stuck yep. in there, right? But with four losses for Port, if you tag them with an extra loss, suddenly they're already on the cusp of the eight. Boom, right away. And uh, the rest of the season get very, very ugly very, very quickly. Not wrong. With Charlie Dixon sort of admitted, Finlayson, maybe those are the things where it's like we're trying to make a point here and like – Rosie and Butters and Co can really sort of push them along, but oof. They rely too much on Rosie and I'm Butters. I'm a bit worried about Port. Yeah, is that something to keep an eye on, Jim? It is. <laughs> keep an eye on. That's right. What are we keeping an eye on for round 14? Number one, if the Saints can actually just be competitive. Come on, Brisbane. Saints. You're better, you're better than that. Like They won last week. I just right? want to see an interesting game. Yeah. I don't want to see a horrible, gross, <laughs> in-the-mud Suns game that they're going to win. Well, I yeah. want to see them actually like just play. Like they were a bit end of last year. End of last year, wasn't that Running bad? off halfback, yeah. Uh, Flip side, if the Lions can just demolish them, the Lions are back. Yep, I agree. Love that. They can make the finals. Hawks, bona fides being tested. Mm. Dusty's 300th. Can they step up? This Sounds is a the crowd. huge game for the young Hawks, isn't it? Yes. No, Will, Will Day didn't come back, did he? So he wasn't in the... No, he played. Did he, played. he play last yeah, week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Interesting I'll double stuff. He's been one of the best players, I, I swear. Unless I'm going crazy. I feel like you might be going crazy. I'm going crazy. crazy. That was. Oh, no, he is. Yeah, half back. Yeah, he's been playing the last So month. he is. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't sound like it. You may make I'm like, confused. is he back? What's going <laughs> on? <laughs> He's been back for the last couple of weeks. That's yeah. it. So He's been great. Their bona fides basically is a team that could make the eight. Yeah. Will be very, very tested in this game. It's Richmond. They're not very good. No. We get that. They've been decent last but three weeks. this is going to be an interesting test no matter what. So bona fides will be tested. Three. Going with defensive chops. We oh. saw them do a number on Melbourne, but Melbourne can't kick a score and have been just smashed the last two weeks. Yeah. Now they don't have Petrarca, they're cooked. Against North, it's going to be fascinating to see if like North can actually just run on them. It'll be it will come in the midfield because North we kick a lot of our goals from the midfield, like Simpkin last week. Yep. If they can, yeah, stop that midfield clearance because that's the only way we can stay in this game is if we get the clearance battle. A lot of young guys in there for the Pies, so it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, it will be interesting. That's why we're keeping. <laughs> that's an why eye it's on keeping it. an eye on. Yeah. Uh, and the other one is obviously is Adelaide like see, season over Adelaide if they lose. Yeah. Uh, Us ones genuinely the best team we've ever seen. No. Uh, <laughs> The best team we've seen this year. Yes. Nah, best team we've ever seen. <laughs> I feel comfortable in that. Essendon are the best team this season. Sydney, the best ever. Wow. Just prove me wrong. Big calls left right me wrong. <laughs> And the last one is, are Port good or not? Keep an eye on. Like, literally, can they travel? Can they actually put up a fight? Can they stay in the top four? Yeah. Are they going to stay up there or is it the slide start now? Mm -hmm. GWS, are they for real? We're about to find out. So I think keep an eye on the structures for JWS with Kelly and Buckley back. Yep. It makes so a big difference. Goals. Let's see what happens. So yep. There's some good keeping eye on. All right. <laughs> super coach. We've got an extra day here, which actually makes it a little bit easier for your super coach this breathe. week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in terms of the actual uh, teams, etc., like we do still have Billy Dowling named, which was good. There was he's actually named on the ground as well. He's, so he was really good last week. So uh, there was yeah. talk about him maybe being the sub for the Crows, mm -hmm. but looks like he's all right. And uh, Nathan Kruger. So your two rookies this week have at least been named. They're on field. Yeah. Happy days. Yeah. Uh, the problem is they both have the bye next week. That's that's okay. You can you can adjust. You can, but it's unless you, you got have to not many a, You have to eat a, do a donut basically at some point. Yeah. So, uh, and what was the other rookie who got named that you show makers show maker from the? From either, the he's been really good in the VFL. Can probably kick it further than anyone else. I wouldn't be surprised if he does an NFL switch uh, later in his career, like like a uh, Sav Rocker or a few of the other guys. Maybe that I should. Maybe you should. <laughs> late, late in my career, get this booming left leg, go out there for the have Patriots. The, have the hammies, hammies for that. I'd tear it off the bone. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be fun to watch. First kick. <laughs> Imagine your leg just came off. That'd be, that'd be fun to watch. Yes, his, his kicker is good. Uh, <laughs> I do see the pro kick guys every yeah. Monday and Friday I'm, I'm, out on the um, out in Brunswick. Brunswick, yeah, I've, I've, I've trained with them before. It's it's very tough. I'm always <laughs> tempted, but I'm always rushing the squids to daycare and school. It's like, oh, just give me one shot. Just give me a helmet. One shot, coach. Come on, bang <laughs> off we go. Uh, Hayden Young, yep. Errol Gould, and my two guys that I brought in this week just because I Don't still love that. the Golden Price Point and yep. Hayden Young. I've just reverted my team back to what I had in round four. So <laughs> yeah. that's great. What a waste of time. I've had, like, I've just, I don't know why I traded out Nick Martin and Hayden Young in the first place. Have you got them both back? I'm an idiot. Oh. They're both back now. Yep. And you still got Vlosten. 
Sucker for punishment. <laughs> uh, VC goes on Zorko for me this week, Ooh. playing the Saints. Halfbacks okay. keep racking up massive scores against the Saints. Uh, Zorko will play a role. He'll be at home. That'll be very, very good. I'll probably chuck the captain on Sarong if that fails. Yeah, yeah. Because Sarong just keeps tearing up the Bulldogs each week. He does. I don't have the bond yet, so uh, that might be like my last sideways upgrade a uh, Clayton Oliver or something to bond. But Heaney is another interesting look Heaney, against Port because I think he is projected is about 124. So, yep. Uh, with no Gorn this week, there's a couple of other... Like Dacos, you don't want to really Dacos risk is that. in, which is handy for Supercoach, but you don't want to put Captain Ovink. If she's he's a all bit against in. the Pies is an interesting one because like halfback I was about to say that. Well, yeah. midfielders who play a little bit back. And like, Marvel as well. Off we go. I don't mind she's at Marvel as my captain, but I'm really banking on uh, Sarong because I mentioned he just averages 30 touches against the Dogs. If he gets 30 touches, he's going to get a good Supercoach score. His projected is 132. So I think I'll, I'll go that. Zorko into Sarong nice. uh, rather than Heaney. Yep. I do love a bit of Heaney. I'll keep an eye on that. <laughs> all right. Anything else there, Stats Boy? No, I think that's it. All right. Covered good it job. all. That's it. AFL Today, done for today. We'll be back on Sunday night. Your mate Jim might have had a few tins, but keep it on the down low. Uh, don't <laughs> tell the boss. All right. Anyway, thank you to the Stats Boy for jumping on today. Thank you. Go north. He says. <laughs> Very worried. I'll tell you what, it is legitimately <laughs> awesome to have a buy. God, they're good. Yeah. Especially when you've won. You wouldn't know about that. Yeah. Anyway, well, we won last week. <laughs> you did. We only, you don't have a we've bite. only played one game this whole year. That's all I can remember. All right. Remember to smash a like for the AFL Today Show across all the socials. See us doing lots of fun stuff during all of your footy gaps throughout the year. Check it out. Face the IG, X, Threads, TikTok, whatever, YouTube. You can check out all of our other shows as well. The Cricket Today podcast, the Football Today podcast, NBA Australia 3-0. The Celtics are up in the final Let's stats, go. man. Let's go. Everything's coming up. Uh, stats guy. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Millhouse. <laughs> and, of course, hold all tickets for all your GGs. Uh, get all around them like Dusty getting around some chopsticks in a 300th <laughs> game. Should be awesome. And that is it. We'll catch you on Sunday night for a big rap show after all of that for more AFL today. Until then, look after yourselves and remember, footy's back. If you like this show, make sure you check out all the other shows in the Sports Today Network, from the AFL Today Show to the Cricket Today Podcast, the Football Today Podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With Sports Today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover.